Ross Bovey here from Revolution Magazine. I'm at Philips London this afternoon with James Marks, International Specialist and Director of UK Watches. This will be different for you, it's your first uh, big season yes. on the other side of the fence as it were. Mm -hmm. How different is it going to be for you? What, how are you feeling about that? Um, it's, it's been a tremendous learning curve, but it's been amazing to have such a knowledgeable, high quality team behind us. Um, we are an international team, we're not just regional, we are, we are one group. Um, to have the mentoring of Aurel, Livia, has been incredible, it's, it's a huge opportunity. Um, and it's been very interesting to see, having been a collector before and you sort of receive a catalogue, it's delivered to you, the actually deliver process how does it get delivered you know what how do you consign how do you find um, and it's understanding Philips and, and coming from the other side um, it's nice to be able to tell the story of you know I've appreciated the work that Aurel and the team have done for a long time the quality of Philips watches has been outstanding since 2013 they've sort of set the the, the mark in regards to catalogues and quality and to actually sort of see that process from behind the scenes has been absolutely fabulous. Talk us through the process of selecting pieces and curating a sale such as this. Well Philips is, is known for quality, we look at two things, we look at quality and provenance, they're, they're the sort of two benchmark words. I think we're known for finding outstanding pieces, not only of great quality but also that are super interesting, we've got some here for you today. Um, but it's, it's a very very slow process we are very thorough in what we do um, there's a lot of information shared around the team we share ideas we share knowledge um, but during the whole time you know a lot of us have been collectors before we've moved into this industry we, we have a feel for what we think collectors appreciate but it always goes back to one word which is quality talk us through some of your highlights from this time. um i've kind of split this this one up into three sections we've got a daytona section which obviously phillips Kind of yeah. known for after the Paul Newman's Paul Newman. Yeah. We have the pre Daytona area, and then I, I picked out two Patek Philippe's that I think are, are absolutely super. Um, we opened the sale up quite early um, with the, the Rainbow Daytona in pink gold, which obviously has been hugely popular. Serious one. Um, yeah. The white and the yellow gold versions now, I mean, dare you call them sort of modern vintage pieces, but they are considered highly amongst collectors, they're beautiful items. Um, and with the pink gold watch here, um, I think it's a very, very special watch. I think we have a huge amount of interest. We've seen a lot of interest in London during the previews in this watch. Um, and with an estimate of 150 to 250,000 Swiss francs, I think we're gonna see um, a lot of interest in this watch. Yeah, it's interesting because you've got two watches in this sale. Mm -hmm that were released this year at Basel, which would yes. be interesting to see. You've got the Pepsi, yeah. the, um, Pepsi GMT yeah. and the Everose Rainbow. Right. So it'd be interesting to see how they perform for I such you know, new watches. I think it's very cool that for Philips to have lot one as, uh, and a lot with no reserve. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. To open with a, the new Jubilee Steel GMT, yeah. I, think it's, um, I think it's great. I think it was totally unexpected. I think a lot of the younger gener generation of collectors that are coming through, again, specifically in the UK, are going to be thrilled that they get a Philips catalogue that isn't just two to three to four to five hundred thousand and more yeah. watches. Yeah. So it's a nice way to open the auction. Um, it's a good introduction. And also then moving on to the, um, the Everose Daytona Rainbow, I think uh, a lot of interest. You know, modern day Rolex is very strong. The brand is, is arguably stronger than it's been for quite a while. Um, and the quality of product is, is deserving of, of some, some space in a Geneva cell. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we were very quick, um, but we were one of the first hands on with the Everose this year uh, yep. with Revolution. And uh, it's a watch that has really set the world on it. And it, I think it's going to bring in maybe even more collectors to the Daytona scene. I mean, We've talked before about the recent surge in interest mm. in uh, self-winding Daytonas. Yeah, think I think with self-winding data, I think particularly with the Rainbow, the beauty of this is you know, Rolex sort of are in this constant sort of drive to create the, the, the perfect product. And we've seen that with 
leading up to the Sarah Chrome bezel model where they, they changed the caliber something like 13 times without ever announcing it. With the, the Rainbow, they stopped production because they felt they could not source the stones of significant quality to bring this perfect picture together. Yeah. And yet here again, back in, in rose gold, not only did we find the bezel with gemstones, we now have the hour markers as well. So it just shows you that Rolex are constantly playing around with concepts yeah. and they're striving for perfection. In this case, it was gem setting. And I, it really, really shows. I love the, the yellow gold. We have a yellow gold example in our New York sale. We have a white gold example in our Hong Kong sale. So the full, the full we have the trilogy. Trinity, yeah. <laughs> the trilogy is here. Um, and you know, it, they're very, very, very special watches. They have appeal from a settable point of view, from a fashion point of view, from a collectible point of view. Very, very small production numbers on Rainbow Daytonas. I think people overestimate. They've seen it, in the, you know, certainly the yellow and white was in the catalogue for a period of time. Yeah. Very, very small production numbers. So the collectability of Rainbows, mm -hmm. yes, prices have, have, have moved somewhat in the last yeah. few years. Yeah. Super collectible, modern. This is obviously a Rolex in-house movement, yeah. but very, very collectible watch. Yeah. So from one hugely collectible Daytona in the rainbow to another equally, if not more collectible watch in the um, Paul Newman, the screw. The, the 6263 Panda Paul Newman is arguably in many people's eyes the Paul Newman. Yeah. By colour rather than three colour with the earlier models, with the screw down pushes, it has an aesthetic that is unquestionably one of the most recognised steel sports watches in the world. This example we have here in uh, the second session of our sale on, on Sunday, it's, it's lot 215, has Mark, it's a Mark II example, it has beautiful original pushers. But what struck me about this watch, and it's something that I think will appeal to the collect community in general, is how this beautiful dial, it has um, lovely original loom, but the outside track and the inside sub-registers are turning this lovely tropical, they're a nice tobacco colour. Um, and we've seen that as a little bit of a theme in, in the auction for Geneva. We've, we've got some outstanding example of tropical um, Rolexes. And this is, is just really uh, a perfect example of, of, of a 6263. Box and papers, um, unquestionably something that would uh, take great pride in any collection. Quality, quality, quality is, is, is the one word that we look for. And, you know, we talk about themes within a sale. A Philips sale is quality and provenance. Yeah. It's, we don't necessarily aim, although we have had tremendous success with, with thematic sales, but with our, our, our sales such as Geneva this year, it's, it's quality is always the, the word. I think people are starting to appreciate the case size. I think people are starting to appreciate the subtlety and dial design that you have in these, these early chronographs. They are totally different to a Vows you watch. Um, we've got two examples of Prelay Toners here. I mean, the word outstanding is, is, is very heavily used in our field, but we too honestly have two exceptional quality Prelay Toners here. This uh, 6236 Jean-Claude Keeley, case sharp, dial beautifully presented, this is a watch that you could argue is a once in a generation opportunity. It it's, has an original box. Um, it came originally from the Bethune collection. Um, this watch was, a, was auctioned by Aurel back in 2012. It held a record price for Jean-Claude Keeley at the time. Still holds that price. Yeah. And I haven't seen a Jean-Claude Keeley in, in such, certainly in steel, in, in such outstanding condition. And there's something for me around um, the oyster case with the river bracelet that just yep. lifts the whole thing. Um, so I'm sure that's going to probably set another record this time. Uh, well, I think if you look at the complication as well, you know, the, the, you know, we talk about Daytonas, which is, say, Milia chronograph. A lot of people have said, oh, a Daytona would be perfect with a date. Well, here you have yeah. Yeah. an earlier example of a, of a Rolex chronograph with a date. Yeah. But again, this watch sums up Philips, sums up quality. It's, it's an outstanding example. It's a, it's, a, it's a once in a generation opportunity to find a Jean-Claude Keeley in such exceptional condition. The Tropical 6238 um, has mesmerized me since I first saw the watch in Geneva. Um, in a similar way to the 6263, but this has such a richness to the dial. It's tobacco. It's dark chocolates that have been thewed in one, in one uh, dial design. It's beautiful. We have another example of a 628 black dial in our Geneva cell, but this one here has a warmth to it. Um, you quite correctly point out it's a transitional reference. It has the suspended T. It's perfect example of a, 
a really nice early um, Rolex chronograph which just has huge character. So from an aesthetical point of view, also from a collectability point of view, it's an absolutely fabulous watch. Let's move away from Rolex onto the Pateks then. What have, what, what have you selected? Um, we've moved away slightly from, from modern Pateks. We're still very much focused on vintage. And um, perhaps one of the references that I think personally is, is a watch that's terrifically undervalued has been certainly the forefront of the sort of seasoned collector's minds, but I think is a watch that embodies everything that is really great about Patek Philippe, an amazing case size, a superb movement, it's the 3974. And what is so lovely about this example is over its 11 year production run, this is the only eighth example in platinum to come to market. Um, and platinum isn't recognized necessarily for its acoustic qualities, but this with its Hagman case is just a superb example of Patek at its, at its best. Um, Perpetual Calendar as well, it's very elegant, it sits on the wrist superbly, but with the beauty of the fact that the subtlety with the lever here, yeah. you hold the secret to it with its obviously is this superb uh, minute repeater mechanism that um, is Patek Philippe sort of embodied, I know from, from conversations I've had with Patek before, it's, it's, every minute repeater is hand tested by the, by the president. So it's a very, very special watch yeah. with, a, with a super, um, subtle design, um, but holding a, a really, really great complication. Yeah, and then, for some reason, I, I've gone through a phase of, of really uh, warming towards vintage Calatravas. And uh, this 570 struck me, not only for the fact that it has the most unusual font in its, in its dial. It's a super example of a 570. Um, very unusual. Um, case width between the lugs is two mils wide and the overall case is, is half a mil um, wider than the standard 570. Case produced by Genevore and, and the, uh, there are hallmarks on the watch that, that indicate this fact. Um, black lacquer with Arabic again gives it a real warmth and from afar you'd, you'd probably think that's a rose gold watch but actually it's 14 karat yellow gold, possibly unique and uh, these cases were generally reserved for the Eastern European market but this is a, a just a great example of a very elegant dressed Patek Philippe Calatrava. The, the proportions and certainly the aesthetics of this, this wider uh, lug width give a vintage watch a very nice, modern, attractive feel. Very unusual. I, I think it would grace any collection very nicely. We've talked about the private treaty sale, the, um, mm -hmm. the evening with Singer, the, the yep. Porsche uh, cars. Do you think there would ever be a London sale? Is that something that you would like to do here? I wouldn't want to rule it out. I think there's a lot of things that, that are happening in the UK at the moment. Brexit is the obvious one. Yeah. Um, sales in the UK traditionally haven't worked for watches because of the VAT situation. Um, Geneva has traditionally held the best quality watches. Yeah. And with the cheaper VAT rate, understandably, the product went to Geneva. Um, I'd love to see a, a Philips sale in London. Um, it's something we're looking at, not confirm, but we'll, we'll look at it. Um, but in the meantime, we're growing out the client base in the UK through events like you mentioned, the yeah. private treaty event. Um, and London is a different model to Geneva. Um, people in London like to sort of have a 12 months approach mm -hmm. necessarily than a traditional auction season approach. So through private treaty, we've started to sort of speak to the client, to the local collectors, to the UK collector base in general a lot more. Um, we haven't just posted a catalogue through and said, hi, we're here. We're yeah. now sort of here 12 months of the year. And that's true not only from the selling side, but also from the consignment side. You know, we're very keen to talk to UK collectors about yeah. consignment. Cool. Well, thanks so much for giving us your time this afternoon and sharing these great watches. And Pleasure. I'm sure the sale's going to be another uh, blockbuster. We hope so. Thank you so much. Thanks, James. Thanks, Ross.